Oftentimes when I make videos, I find myself asking the question of, who is it for? And more importantly, who cares? How's it going everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And today we're not talking about one, we're talking about two awesome knives from Artisan Cutlery that you can get very inexpensively. Shout out to them for making this video possible and for sending these in for review. Uh, both of these are knives that I'm gonna tell you right now have absolutely no business being as affordable as they are, and we're going to talk about why. This is the Artisan Cutlery Ahab and the Artisan Cutlery Andromeda. Let's go. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Oh, man, I'm excited. And, you know, it's it's really cool uh, that Artisan Cutlery reached out to me and said, hey, you think your your audience would be interested in 60% off? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, look, I like 60% off. And I think that at, this, at that price point, you know, given that both of these knives are so well priced to begin with, I don't know how you can go wrong. Um, look, let's go ahead and get these boxes going. Um, Artisan Cutlery, if you didn't know, is the premium brand for CJRB, or CJRB is the budget brand for Artisan Cutlery. Same thing. The packaging is different, the logos are different, but they are in fact the same companies. Something that I absolutely love about Artisan Cutlery is, is that they give you these really plushy felt pouches with the gold drawstrings, it really does feel like a more premium unboxing. And something that they do really well, especially on their premium designs, is that they actually work with notable knife designers. This is the Ahab, and this is a knife that I've already reviewed. Um, however, the last one that I reviewed was sent in by a viewer, and this one was sent to me directly by Artisan Cutlery. Now they asked me, hey man, uh, which one would you like to check out? And because I checked out the one with the wood handles before, yeah, I wanted to check out the G10 because I just wanted to see, do I like it as much as I like the one with the wood handle skills? We're gonna get into it, we're gonna talk about it. Uh, something else that you get in the box with every Artisan Cutlery knife is going to be this certificate of authenticity or just this cert, the spec sheet is what they call it. Um, but in fact, it doesn't actually give you all the specs. So I'm gonna do that. Know this G10 handle scale, uh, AR RPM 9 steel or RPM 9. <laughs> Love that. Uh, blade hardness is 59 to 61 HRC, which is optimal for their steel. It is their steel. So trust me when I say that they understand what is optimal. Ceramic ball bearing, and of course, the process used to make this was a CNC machine. So that's the Ahab. The other one is the Andromeda. And you guys might be a little shocked because I almost never, almost never request one in the Jade slash uh, natural G10 because I just never feel like they look that good online. But I was really drawn to this black blade and the green thumb stud yeah there's just something about that and i'm gonna get into why i requested the one with the natural g10 the jade g10 as we go let's talk about the specs uh, we'll talk about what i like we'll talk about what i don't like and then i'll give you my final thoughts and at any point guys if you want one of these i highly suggest checking out the description down below because if you use the discount code that they provided for the audience of this channel you get 60% off these prices on Amazon. So those links will, of course, be affiliate links. So if you decide to buy one, you'd be helping out the channel. But don't feel like you have to. That's just if you decide that one of these or both of these is for you. Also, these aren't going to be the only knives that they have on sale that you can use that code for. So even if one of these doesn't hit your fancy, uh, feel free to check out the rest of their store too because there could be something else that is deeply discounted with that code. All right, uh, let's talk about this one first. Uh, this is the 
Artisan Cutlery Ahab. Uh, they make this in a couple different versions. You can get one with the G10 handle scales or like this, or you could get it with the wood handle scales, like the one that I had reviewed prior. And if you want to watch that video, I will link it up above. I reviewed it a while ago, so you could always see my thoughts there, but we're still going to talk about it. As far as the specs are concerned on the Ahab, it's going to come in at about 7.9 inches overall, so just shy of eight inches. The blade length is not super long. It's a 3.31 inch blade. Um, AR RPM 9 for the steel G10 handle skills liner lock with this crowned liner. It's got a titanium milled pocket clip, titanium backspacer, thumb stud action, and it is, of course, running on ceramic bearings. Cool. Let's talk about the Andromeda. The Andromeda is going to come in two finishes as well. Actually, it's going to come in more depending upon where you're looking at these. You can get a higher end version of this in titanium and S35VN. However, this one is going to have G10 handle scales, button lock, thumb stud, AR RPM9 for the steel. It's got these inset steel liners, which is kind of nice. Deep carry pocket clip, 3.4 inch blade, so just shy of three and a half inches. Great for those of you who live in states that don't let you conceal carry a knife with over a three and a half inch blade. Uh, also going to be 7.9 inches overall. Uh, so very similar in the length to the Ahab. Ceramic ball bearings on that pivot. It is not single sided, but the action is very, very smooth. We like that. We like that a lot. All right. So let's talk about what I like about these knives. And we'll start with the Ahab. Uh, this is a Nick Rogers design. Nick Rogers uh, goes by Niche Designs, and he's awesome. Uh, this man really knows how to put a knife together. And something that I mentioned in my initial review is that these handle scales, um, this right here, you might notice there is no pivot on here. And you're like, what is going on? How does he make this work without a pivot? Uh, do not fear. The pivot is, in fact, there. It's just hiding in the inset liner behind these scales. Uh, because he did scale overlays, um, he was actually able to hide the pivot inside the, these scales, uh, which allows for a very, very clean aesthetic. Now, with that being said, these uh, screws are, in fact, T6, which I'm not a huge fan of, but these screws underneath are are T8, and that is something that I'm a fan of. Something else that I think is really cool is this crowned watch head thumb stud. Yeah, uh, that's pretty sweet. Um, another thing is this is a full flat grind with a harpoon style sheep's foot blade. This knife is going to be your pinch grip king. Uh, the balance on this knife is fantastic. I really really like the balance of this knife. I can, of course, get a full four finger grip, which is fantastic. And if I do a reverse grip, yeah, I mean, it works. It's not the greatest in a reverse grip because this does come over here in the wrong direction for a reverse grip, but does it work? Yeah, it works. It's going to be quite at home in a regular saber style grip or even in a hammer grip. It's going to be good. The handle scales do suggest where you should put your fingers in case you forgot. Um, however, you can, of course, write your own story on that one. A lot to like here on this knife. The action is great. The blade is super, super thin and very, very slicey. Now on the Andromeda, this is a Ray Laconico design. Ray Laconico is, well, he's iconic for making simple designs that just work really damn well. Uh, this one being a button lock, I can tell you that it definitely lives up to what CJRB and Artisan Cutlery have been doing this year because it seems like every button lock they have been releasing has just been fantastic, freaking fantastic. What I like about this knife, another one with great balance and the shape lends itself to be very good for utility cuts because even though this is a drop point, the drop point drops so far that it's going to be really easy to get into packages, to break down boxes, to cut some tape. 
Um, it's going to be good tip first. Can you do this one in a reverse grip? Oh yeah, yeah, no problemo. Now they do have this in black G10 with the satin finish and uh, black thumb studs, but to be honest with you, this one just kind of stuck out to me and I don't typically do Jade G10 on this channel because I'm not generally a fan of it. However, I gotta say in person, it looks a lot better than I expected it would. Um, it's not going to show up as good on camera, but it looks great. And the best part about natural slash Jade G10 handle scales is that if you get some writ dye, you can writ dye this whatever color you want on the handle scales. You wanna do blue, you can do blue. You wanna do an actual green, you can do that. You wanna do red, you can make it Christmas colored, Christmas themed. You can color these whatever you want. And that is the best part of JG10 is you can really write your own story with those. Uh, it is of course a reversible deep carry pocket clip. It does go on the other side and they do have another screw going in there that kind of takes up that empty space. That's nice. The ceramic bearings on here, it's very drop shutty. Yeah, it's not really a word, but it's a phrase that's been used a lot. I'm a big fan of this jimping here which they didn't have to do. They didn't have to do that jimping, but it is nice because it helps lock you in. That's great. This is a knife that does not need a finger cutout, and I'm not mad at that it doesn't have one because the ergos are great. It truly is a choose your own story on the ergos. There's no suggestions of where to put your hands. Uh, you know, Ray Laconico just assumes that if you're using it, you know where to put them. So yeah, that's great. This knife is extremely fidgety as is most of the button lock knives from Artisan Cutlery, but this one just feels well balanced. And also, if you don't like G10 and you don't want G10, you can actually get these in titanium and S35VN for somewhere around 200 bucks. And I'll throw in a link for that as well in the description in case you're interested in a more high-end version of this knife. Um, so far, the design language on this one is fantastic. Ray Laconico, either you love them or you don't. If you do love them and you want a more affordable Ray Laconico design to carry around, this is definitely one that I can recommend because it's going to be on sale and it's just really freaking good. I love this black PVD coating on the blade that turns out really nicely. It's going to help protect uh, over time against wear and tear and it will save you if you like to keep your knives looking good over time. I can, of course, 100% recommend the JG10 version. I actually think the JG10 looks way better than I thought it would. Um, but again, if you don't, the good news is that you can, of course, writ dye this a completely different color. Let me know in the comment section down below, would you be interested in a how-to writ dye your G10 knife scales video? Is that something that you'd wanna see? Let me know. I might just have to do that, although it would be a shame to break up this aesthetic, which I do actually find myself liking. There is, in fact, a little bit of billboarding on the blade, but we'll go ahead and get into that in the next segment. Let's talk about what I don't like. Um, we'll start with the Ahab. I don't like that we have such tiny screws here on the front. Now, it's not generally a big deal when we're talking about scales that overlay the actual workings of the knife. Because everything else that is used to adjust this knife is below this show scale, it's not a huge deal because these screws are not necessarily super deeply embedded, so they are less likely to break off and strip. Um, that said, since I do take apart my knives and I do maintain them, I do prefer T8s. Not a huge deal there. Another thing is that I wish that this pocket clip was reversible. Um, they could have in fact done that. Now I get it. Most of the market is right-handed and they're not going to care about that, but I do got to represent my lefties out there because if you can't utilize a knife ambidextrously and you are in fact one of the few that is left-handed, it's, it's kind of a bummer that you can't get this knife because there is so much to love about it. So this clip is in fact not reversible. That is a little bit of a bummer. And also the other thing is that I wish that there was some jimping up here on the spine of the blade. We have so much area for jimping. In fact, I actually think that it would have gone well right there. Uh, this knife is supreme for the pinch grip. That pinch grip can happen all day, um, but there's no supporting jimping there. And that is something that I wish was in fact there. 
Moving on to what I'm not a huge fan of on the Andromeda. Uh, first and foremost, no single-sided captive pivot. I really wish that they had done that. I don't know why we don't, but we don't. Um, it's 2023. We need to put single-sided captive pivots on just about everything um, because it makes it easier to disassemble. Now, am I saying that this is hard to take apart? No, um, but anytime you have a open screw face on either side, it just means that you might have to have an extra T8 screwdriver to go ahead and take it apart. And that is a little bit of a pain, especially if you're one of those people that only has one. So that's not something I'm a huge fan of. The other thing I'm not a huge fan of is just how much billboarding we have here. It says the model number 1856P followed by AR RPM 9, which is the steel and then R Laconico. Uh, the reason why that's a bit of a bummer for me is especially on a Ray Laconico design, his designs are known for their simplicity and adding a bunch of billboarding to the blade is kind of taking away from that. Is that a big deal? Absolutely not. It's just one of those things that I kind of wish that they had just stuck with the artisan cutlery logo on the show side and said, yeah, you know what? Good enough. Uh, we'll, we'll put it on the certificate of authenticity when everything else is. Oh wait, it, you know what? AR RPM nine and 1856 B is already there. So if it's already there, we don't really need it on the blade. I'm okay with our Laconico on there. Um, I just wish that there was a little bit less billboarding. Uh, something else I'm not a huge fan of is even though I do love that there is jimping here, the jimping on this one is not super deep. Is it an issue? No, um, that's 100% of preference. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that there is jimping at all. I will take some over none. And if you want more toothy jimping, you can, of course, take a file to it and do it yourself. But otherwise, I don't think it's going to be an issue for most people. It's just something that I would have liked to have seen just a little bit deeper on that jimping pattern. Overall, really like this knife. In fact, I actually really like both of these knives. If I had to pick one out of the two, I would of course go with the Ahab. And if you watched my other review on this knife, uh, the one thing that I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of is not knowing what kind of wood the other handle scales were made out of on the other version of this, because some wood is not necessarily all that tough. Some wood is. Uh, with the G10 variant, you don't have to worry about that. The G10 is really, really nicely molded and chamfered over. Uh, those edges are super good. And I think that for someone that uses knives all day, if you are a extreme user of your knives, this is definitely going to be the one to go with. Uh, Nick Rogers, such a great knife designer, and he absolutely killed it on this one. I love the funky blade shape with the harpoon sheep's foot. I love the fact that you can get this knife for well under 100 bucks and still get effects like this 3D milled titanium pocket clip and also the uh, titanium backspacer. That's great. And look, even for the weirdos that like to put lanyards on their pocket knives, there's a spot for you too. And not only that, but it's properly placed. There's no hole in the handle scale interrupting that design language and being an eyesore. It's where it's supposed to be, in between the scales. Thank you, Nick Rogers. Thank you, Artisan Cutlery. That is fantastic. Oh, and one more thing. I do happen to think that these are, in fact, the best thumb studs money can buy. You just pop it out there, whether it's going with the regular deployment or the reverse deployment. That is fantastic. Nick Rogers did an absolutely wonderful job on this knife. And the only downside that I can really think of, aside from the fact that I wish that these were T8 screws, is the fact that I wish that these came with titanium handle scales. Titanium handle scales, a full tie, maybe with a frag pattern would be bananas. And I would probably buy that immediately uh, because that would just be fantastic. As it stands, the G10 is good. AR RPM 9 is good. And this knife is, in fact, definitely one that I can highly recommend to just about anyone, especially with that discount. On the Andromeda, I feel like it really stayed true to Ray Laconico on everything, but the billboarding on the blade, given his simplistic but useful design language, he's always done a great job on his designs, and that's why they're very highly sought after. This knife impressed me. Out of the two that I, uh, both of these that I knew were coming, this was the one that I wasn't quite sure if I was going to like it or not, but after spending the day with it, putting it in my pocket, I can tell you that it's rather good. 
Uh, these bent pocket clips are not the best looking, but they do in fact go in and out of the pocket nicely and it will give you a great deep carry. Also, if you're not a huge fan of these pocket clips, you could of course go on Artisan Cutlery's website and see if you could buy their titanium clips. They don't mention that they are compatible with these models, but I checked the screw patterns and uh, they are in fact the same clips that you find on the knives that the titanium clips were meant for. So pretty sure that they would work. In fact, I think I'm gonna go ahead and order a few. That's fantastic. Both of these are great knives and I think that for the money you can't go wrong. So if you like this video guys and you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna watch more awesome knife content, go ahead and click on the video that pops up next.